Hello? This is Greg. Hello? Hello, Greg. What the fuck? For years you have made emotional connections with the ones you love. And for years you have used your humor to sabotage those friendships. You're afraid of connection. You're afraid to love. And to put it plain and simple, you don't appreciate your life. No! I, I, I share my sense of humor because I love others! Now knowing how textbook you can be, I'm going to assume you will try and talk your way out of this one. This is a recording, so don't waste your words. Oh shit, well if I had known that, I wouldn't have said anything. Oh, there's more. Hello, Reject Nation. It's Greg Alba here. And it's John Humphrey over here. So over at our Patreon, where you can become a patron eject today, by the way, one of our reward tiers is that whatever video you request, whether it be a reaction or a discussion, we will definitely do. Tony McGuire, he has requested that we do our top five favorite scariest films. Compiling this list for you, Tony, and the rest of the reject world. We wanted to choose five films of our own, making it 10 in total. With we overlap. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to choose uh, five films ourselves that not so much from an intellectual experience, but from an emotional experience. Because some of these films that I'm going to list on my side are not exactly that scary to me now, but when I saw them, they scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and likewise for John. Before we go into this list, uh, I want to make it clear that we are by no means saying that these are necessarily our favorite horror films of all time, or that these are the most definitively scary films of all time. We are drawing strictly from personal experience saying that at the time, whatever age we were at, when we viewed these movies, these scared the crap out these of us. Scared yeah. us. <laughs> Because I, I, I honestly think like maybe looking at my list, two of these are actually I would consider my top five favorite horror movies. Mm -hmm. My favorite horror movie is not even on this list. <laughs> so just want to make that clear. John, with you being the horror buff, do you want to kick this off? Uh, my number five, I went with the most recent title on my list. I went with Green Room. We really scared you, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, the stuff that scares me the most is usually the human cruelty stuff, the stuff that's kind of plausible and down to earth. I don't think any of my films have. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. There's something about about legitimate human cruelty that gets under my skin. And Green Room is such an intense movie about these people sort of yeah. trapped in this dingy little rock club surrounded by neo-Nazis. That in and of itself, combined with just the sheer intensity of that movie and a few of the things that happen, again, like the violence and the gory moments are very down to earth. And there's something, again, about that. It's that age-old horror thing you talk about where, like, you can watch someone get their head sawed off and it's one thing. But, you know, when someone gets, like, sliced up with a box cutter or whatever that hits you in a whole other way yeah. and so this movie was uh, one of the most tense experiences I had recently and that's why I made my list well my number five pick for the exact same reasons <laughs> <laughs> the ring now despite what you might actually say about it I could already hear the hate comments coming <laughs> in for having this on my list when did we see this John it must have been like 12 Late 13 something like that yeah I was during a sleepover on VHS with all the lights out, thank you. <laughs> this movie did scare the crap out of me. It scared, I saw it in middle school at least. We were somewhere around there. And it might have something to do with the age I was at during the time. But there's something specifically about Japanese types of horror. And I, like this, mm -hmm. and I know this is Gore Verbinski's film, but it is a remake with a lot of direct inspiration from J-horror uh, type of cinema, especially Ringyu because that's where it's the remake of. When I saw this film, the imagery in it would haunt me. It would yeah. get under my skin. Like I said, this isn't gonna come from intellectual understanding it from the brain type. The tension, the suspense, the character of Samar Samara, is her name? When she comes out of the television, as gimmicky <laughs> as that has become in the Ring franchise, the first time I experienced that, was easily one of the most horrifying things I have ever endured in my life. I was ready to crap my pants. I did not know what to do. And I would imagine that girl in so many different places wherever I went. If the lights were off and I was alone or walking somewhere, I would just imagine this girl coming to haunt me. There's something more about supernatural demonic stuff, maybe because we were in Catholic school at the time and I was yeah. a devoted Catholic, of why this really affected me, because it has that level of demonic haunting type of horror. Well, and of all the, the ghost stories out there, I feel like J-horror movies typically are pretty frightening in terms of supernatural yeah, they stuff. Had the... <laughs> and, and I think the Ring is a great choice. Weirdly enough, the, the TV thing has never bothered me, ever. But 
the twisted up face when they find yeah. that girl in the closet freaked the I, shit I out of me. I remember the first time I showed that, you that. <laughs> and we did a show back in the day for Nerdist and Fangoria. We went to like effects houses and we went to Rick Baker's studio and I went into his showroom and he has that behind a door. So when you look behind the door, <laughs> not expecting to see that, you see that and it double scared me again. You had a genuine reaction the first time. I. Yeah. Genuine I reaction. remember it so well. Freaked me out. It wasn't yeah. even like a ah! like it was that wasn't John. Yeah. John just went, we're watching him and we're sitting at a desk. He has his hand on the desk. We're watching this movie. Then once that happens, he goes, Oh no. <laughs> no. I'm like, what's wrong? No. I just I, I, I can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. I'm never coming to grips that. with my own mortality in that this moment. This is like 10 like, or 15 years ago. That still makes me laugh. Terror. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't like it. Number four on my list, I chose Drag Me to Hell, Ooh, good one. which is a, a favorite horror movie of mine generally, but I'll never forget the first time that we went and watched this. We went to a test screening back when we used to go to a lot of those. We were screening a PG-13 cut and an R-rated cut. We got the R-rated cut. That totally was... different. <laughs> <laughs> So much change. There's like maybe one specific change I could think of. Yeah, they cut down one scene. The cat death. Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, it's just less she, gory. And then the R-rated one, she actually stabs the cat. But you don't see like it, blood, but there's blood. And, but, yeah. but it's really heavily implied. It's yeah. gross in the way yeah, Sam Raimi's things yeah, are gross. Yeah. That movie, the first time I saw it especially, was the most I ever like jumped and like cowered, but also laughed in the same moment some of the time. Because like the way he shoots that old lady, Mrs. Gunn, she just pops up out of nowhere yeah. and he somehow finds a way to make her terrifying before any of the truly supernatural <laughs> stuff starts to come out. And yeah, that movie has such a sense of dread. You know, getting older into my teen years and stuff, that movie really made me jump a whole lot. Yeah. My number four pick is probably the earliest horror film I have ever seen. This is a film that when I watch it now, I get more from it in terms of its awe and wonder and beauty. Didn't register any of that when I was a kid. <laughs> Poultry Guys. Poultry Guys scared the crap out. I mean, this is actually a contribution to two big fears of mine, clowns and dolls, because this movie had one that combined both. I don't know, maybe because I was a little boy when I saw it and a little boy just peering over the bed and I not knowing what's going to happen. And then when the doll reaches out and grabs, that was so terrifying to me. And also when it's like implied that the ghost is taking advantage of the mom at one point. Yeah. It's like implied. Some, it's not made clear. There's some disturbing elements yeah. to that movie for sure. Yeah, I mean, that, that was just this overall super spooky film and also the violence in a PG film Man, have ratings changed. But oh, yeah. the violence when the guy's like tearing off his face in that nightmare sequence. Mm -hmm. That was the kind of image that really got under my skin. Because nowadays I don't really find too many movies that really scare me. But when I was a little boy, this came out before I was born, I think. And uh, watching that on my dad's laser disc. That, that gave me nightmares, that one. That, that was one that truly haunted me, yeah. Number three is a film no one's talked about yet, Drag Me to Hell. Hey! My end. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you tell us all about it? <laughs> well, Drag Me to Hell. This, I think, I saw before I ever uh, visited uh, the Evil Dead franchise. Really? A and I think that might have been a major contribution as to why it terrified me. Because I wasn't prepared. Like, you would see hints of that kind of style of direction of Sam Raimi from, like, Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 2. And I knew he had done Evil Dead, but I hadn't seen those movies yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Watching this one, I had a very similar experience to you, which is I was a combination of a lot of laughter and a lot of fear. I guess the main contribution I can make of how terrified I was, similar to The Ring, where I would imagine this old lady terrifying me, I had to find interviews of that actress just so I could differentiate myself from who this woman was and go, she's just an actress and it's not real dude <laughs> come to find out like she's not even Just... like a foreign lady she's an american woman with a it's good acting it's, it's such good acting that i thought they hired an actual foreign actress for the role props for just making you know a kindly yeah. old lady super spooky yeah <laughs> it was a great time i actually had a ball doing it i was a little apprehensive going into it but 
but I had a wonderful time. And it didn't really help, <laughs> but it did like aid a little bit. And, and when I, oh, it's just an actress, it's just an actress. That film scared the crap out of me, which is weird because I've introduced it to some people who oh, don't get that scared by that movie. It's a goofy movie at the same time. Yeah, it's I think zany. I think it's effective when you have no idea what you're going to watch. I think when you yeah. watch the trailers and you're expecting Terror Fest, the comedy can ease you. Uh, yeah. But, but when, when you have no idea what you're going to watch, I, I think that it's just a fright fest. Yeah, yeah. totally. And it's weird, too. Like yeah. That whole eyeball in the cake thing and... and because like, it grips you. Yeah, and it's, it's like so it's spang your face gripping terror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's got so many different tricks up its sleeve. It's, it's jump scare galore, but really effectively done, I think. Number three, I'm changing tactics, and I'm gonna go for something gross. So for number three, I chose the Human Centipede Two full sequence. Well, you know, before you go into it, I haven't even tried to watch that movie because I've heard so much about it. I've heard details <laughs> primarily from you. The second movie, or the yeah, first second movie, movie <laughs> okay. that I'm like. I don't even want to see it. I just don't. I don't even want those images in my mind. You don't have to. Thing is, I have a weird predilection for ugly cinema sometimes, for just nasty movies. First Human Centipede fascinated me because it sort of completely subverted my expectations and it's not the movie you think it's gonna be. The second movie is really the movie you thought the first movie <laughs> was gonna be. And it's basically the cinematic <laughs> equivalent of going, oh yeah, you really wanted to see all that stuff? Here you go. I get why people hate that, but I remember the first time I watched this movie, my boss at, at Fangoria gave me a Blu-ray and I sat down late one night and that is the first time in a long time where I had to watch certain scenes through my hands because it was getting so depraved and so gross. It's a fascinatingly ugly movie in a way where like the lead character is the complete opposite of the villain from the first. He's this portly guy who barely speaks and is making this human centipede with a staple gun and some duct tape and it is a horrifying motion picture to behold. It's not perhaps the most extreme film of all time. I know some people are gonna bust in the room and be like, necromantic, solo, Serbian, Serbian film. film. Yeah, <laughs> Fair, I, I still have, yeah, I have a copy of Serbian film burning a hole in the shelf over there that I'll watch someday, but Human Centipede 2 was a pretty horrifying experience to behold on, on a grossness and depravity scale. Part of the concept for Human Centipede 2 was to do everything the opposite. So it was where the first film is shot kind of beautifully. Like it's very symmetrical, it's very clean, it's very fluid. The second movie is in black and white, it's nasty, it's handheld, you know, the, the photography is gross too. There is a little bit of color, brown. <laughs> in this movie, no. but otherwise it's all in black and white. I didn't even know that. <laughs> once, once you see it, you're like, I don't think that turning this black and white would have helped you at all with the rating. <laughs> I think it only makes it that much more upsetting, if that makes any sense. And it's, it's weird and meta and disturbing because the conceit, again, is that this is just a deranged fan of the first film who's making it happen for real. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. All right, number two. Number two. <laughs> you guys Ow. ready to really give me Crap, crap <laughs> right now for what I am gonna put on this. Oh boy, I am ready for the hate comments to come pouring in. And like I said, this is personal life experience, paranormal activity. <laughs> I had zero idea what I was going into. I was working at some company at the time, like nothing film or anything related. A group of coworkers was like, I just saw paranormal activity. Have you heard of this? It's really scary. And I was like, no, what the hell is that? So I went with my, um, like, what was my XXX or something number <laughs> girlfriend and we went to go watch this movie and I, I knew nothing about it. I hadn't seen an image. I hadn't heard anything except for a few coworkers and the theater was packed. I was like, is this like a popular movie or something? <laughs> Hey, people demanded it. Like, <laughs> and then I come to our city. And then it starts and I'm like, oh, it's one of those like, realistic types of deals. <laughs> I didn't know what found footage it was. Yeah, <laughs> as yeah. the film keeps going, I, just, I was just getting more and more terrified as it kept going. That was a film that literally had me on the edge of my seat throughout the entire time. Yes, it's simplistic. And I see in retrospect, looking back on it and revisiting it on DVD like years later, ah, it's not that terrifying of a film. <laughs> but at the time, with no preconceived notion, knowing nothing about it. I was in an audience and and I had said out loud to my, my ex-girlfriend, I said to her, do you know what this is about? She's like, no. And then 
a bunch of other people heard us say that, and everyone was like, yeah, we haven't, I haven't heard of this either. <laughs> We're just hearing it because we oh, heard it was scary. I am and, jealous of you. So, yeah, that was, um, that, that I think being in the theater and, and not having seen a single clip or having any idea what, what, what was going to happen, that really contributed. And, and it was, I was questioning it, like, the first half. Like, is this real? Yeah. This feels real. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It felt real. Unlike Blair Witch, which I still feel does not feel all that real to me. I think the acting's great in that movie. I'll still give it that. I still think the acting's really good in that movie. Paranormal yeah. Activity is a movie that I, I appreciate a lot, even though it gets a lot of crap. And the thing is, I, I really envy your experience because I, I saw this on the last day it was in the theater near me alone. No one was in that auditorium except me. I watched it, and I, the hype really got in the way for me. I was like, this is cool. Yeah. I'm impressed by this. I, I appreciate what they've done with not much here. Yeah. However, I'm waiting for things to happen. You know, and that was my experience. And, and it's one of those times where I really wish... I had your experience. I really wish yeah. I could have seen it that way because I'm I'm bummed I missed. I out got in it. there when word of mouth was spreading. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah. when the hype train was on. Not when people like this is the scariest film <laughs> yeah. of all time. Yeah. And then I went in and I was like, what did I miss? <laughs> yeah. My number two choice, I chose uh, a film by one of my very favorite directors, Danny Boyle. A film uh, called Twenty Eight Days Later. It's an outbreak or zombie movie if you want to have that argument. Movie. It's a zombie movie. It, it takes the tropes of zombie cinema. And uh, yeah, that's one movie <laughs> that I, I rented even and it still terrified me. I feel like that movie is a terrifically made horror movie overall and that's part of what makes it so scary is like the situation is so immersive. It's so intense and you get to know the characters really well. You get to know the situations really well. It's a well-conceived film but also just those sequences where dudes are ripping through windows and like chasing after Killian Murphy and stuff like that and even the, the times when he's all alone in London that movie really got under my skin and actually the especially the first time and even on repeat viewings gets me you know yeah John I'm not gonna choose to comment on your number two because it's my number one pick. <laughs> Perfect segue. Uh, I, I have never experienced a movie I, I've never really watched it actually really I saw it one time in the theaters oh, I could tell you all about it I wish I saw a trailer for it before I went to church on Sunday with my family. <laughs> I took a nap after church, and for some reason I really wanted to see the movie. AMC Burbank 16 had just been a new open theater that people were loving, so I said, hey mom, you wanna go watch 28 Days Later? What's that? I don't know, some scary thing? When that movie come out? Something like 2000 or something? Yeah, I was young. I wasn't even a teenager. <laughs> I was young. I told the story on the Josh Bakuga show. We get to the theater. Theater is packed. My mom needs her popcorn. I go inside the theater. There are no two seats available together, and the movie's gonna start in like a minute. <laughs> like the trailers are about to wrap. Doing that thing where it's a commercial before the movie starts. So I just grab some seat, and I'm like a ten year old kid by myself about to watch this movie. The movie starts. It looks terrifying, and uh, the digital, the way it was shot. What kind of film was that on? Yeah, wasn't it shot on video? Yeah, it shot on video, which just makes it way scarier. Yeah. <laughs> it feels way more authentic. It was like a home video they put together. Wreck kind of borrowed a little bit. I yeah. yeah, and and then, oh, found footage, generally yeah. speaking. Yeah, because it was like it was a found footage movie without being a found footage movie, just because they chose to shoot it in that in that uh, type of camera. Yeah, it has that naturalistic feeling. Yeah, my mom, uh, it goes to Killian Murphy. And like John said, you do get to know these characters. He's just naked on screen. It was the first time I'd seen, seen a penis in a movie. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> my mom walks in with two big popcorns and two large sodas. <laughs> it's just like this long ass shot killing Murphy's penis on screen. <laughs> She's looking around and she just can't find me, so she has to go sit by herself with all this popcorn and stuff. And then the movie endures. And I, I don't know, like, I'm not 10 years dark, old with an appreciation of train spotting at the time. Like, I, I don't know who Danny Boyle is. I have no idea who these people are. I think it was the first zombie movie where they're running. Yeah, it was. The, it yeah. did kick off the whole, like, rabid zombie vibe. Yeah, that was horrifying. <laughs> because I, like, watched zombie movies when I was younger. And I thought they were cool. They always walk slow and everything. Yeah. And then, and, and it's not like Dawn of the Dead, even Zack Snyder's version where they run. Like when they run, 
on here. They're like, <laughs> you know? Wait, they have... they're like rage ballistic animals oh, in yeah. that movie. They've got like super rabies. Yeah, and I love the transformation where it's like yeah. just a little, just a little. Like the, when the one guy, I remember it. I only oh, said one time, but yeah. I remember when the, the blood drip goes into the guy's yeah. eye, and then in like 15 seconds or something, it's like 30 <laughs> seconds. I forget. It's quick. It's super quick. They transform because the movie. I think what makes it so effective is it's equally scary as it is heartbreaking throughout. Yeah, and and because the... that guy was a dad, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it's scary. It's heartbreaking. And the thing is too, the rabid people, the, the zombie creatures are scary, and there are some pretty scary human characters too. Oh yeah, and yeah. Like it hits you from both angles. It's like just what life is like because of this is scary. I appreciate Twenty Eight Weeks Later, but I, I don't, I, I don't love it anywhere near as much. Out of all personal life experiences I've had, I've never been so terrified. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Imagine yeah, yeah. being like a 10 year old boy just watching this by yourself in the theaters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. My number one pick uh, is a movie from the 1980s that I saw um, last year or the year before or something like that. I watched recently anyway. I was not expecting how much this movie still holds up and that is Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. That's your number one pick, huh? That movie really got under my True skin. True crime really bothers you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what a weirdo you are. <laughs> and the thing, because the thing about Henry is like, Henry has that scuzzy snuff movie vibe where, again, in a completely different way from a movie like Texas yeah. Chainsaw, but in a similar spirit, or even 28 Days Later, it feels like you're just privy to this guy's life for an hour and yeah. a half, two hours. You're just, portrait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're just watching these things unfold, and, the, and the, the scenes where they're killing people are legit disturbing. They're disturbing. To me. Like, scenes, yeah. Really got under my skin in a way that actually makes made me feel kind of afraid of my fellow man and the yeah. contents of the mind and stuff like that. So um, oh, interesting. And, and it's always really stuck with me for that reason. And I always get a specific feeling when I think back to it. Yeah. So I wasn't sitting there like jumping the whole time, but it really did scare me. And it's, 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 it's a movie I point to also because, you know, again, there are so many notable serial killers. Whoa. Deja vu. It's a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> Either that or we just have very bad luck. Whenever I think back on that movie, I, I just get a, a feeling that few other movies have ever given me. It's always stuck with me. And yeah, I, I think it's a pretty scary motion picture. And Michael Rooker just disappears into it. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's one of those movies that's like, I think is great, but is really hard to recommend to people. I'm like, I don't know if I want you to put yourself through this. It's the same like with a human centipede. I'm like, you don't want to watch it? Cool. <laughs> Never yeah. argue with you, but yeah, I, I, I that movie holds up for me. I feel like you could recommend all my choices. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> could. Your choices. Some of your choices are like those are just really disturbing movies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what well, do you have? Any honorable mentions? Do you have any? Uh... Carrie was a film that terrified me. The reason it didn't make my list was because it was really like sequences when it would come and go, like stuff with her mom, and then the the finale at the prom was pretty scary to me, and the end when she her hand pops out, and that scene where they go shopping for prom clothes, and it's yeah. all like fast, like sped up that was my zany. introduction to what a period is too it's like why why is she bleeding i didn't understand body horror <laughs> yeah. Moment, yeah. evil dead the first one the uh, original one yeah. yeah i think that one really scared me a lot like the second one's spooky and fun i think it's a better film the first one's the one that like whoa that was, that was hard to sit through yeah yeah and it's shrill too which yeah. really is unsettling the shining was a very uncomfortable experience for me but it was also the first couple times i saw it i was really young so it, I, I didn't love it because because it's really Stanley Cooper is super slow. Got so a, you have real, to, we have to real wait focus. some time to appreciate dread and wait <laughs> yeah. for some terror to really start happening. Likewise for The Exorcist, same applicable thing. That's a film I, I feel like I really appreciated when I was like closer to being an adult. I would definitely also say Scream. Scream's my, arguably my favorite horror movie of all time. I guess one more that had some really frightening stuff and the twists, a film where the twists scared me. And normally a twist is just cool and oh, how did I not see that coming? This twist got under my skin, and th and that was the others. That 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 yeah. twist was like, oh, that makes the movie so much scarier. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Not bad at all. That's yeah. actually, the others made my uh, list of honorable mentions as well. It's one of my favorite horror movies, actually. One of my favorite yeah. uh, ghost movies in general. Yeah, I chose that. The Ring, uh, I put on my honorable mentions as well. Uh, House on Haunted Hill, I know I harp on that one a lot. And uh, as a child, that movie freaked me out and is one of my like formative horror movie experiences. I lost some sleep over that, so I felt the need to uh, mention it here. The Evil Dead, for sure. The Hills Have Eyes remake, too. I thought was it's pretty scary. Pretty, pretty. Ugh. A shout out to Hellraiser too. Like I don't think it's terrifying, but in terms of all those classic '80s movies that we hearken back to, those those franchises, that's the one I saw that that did make me feel kind of yeah inside when I first watched it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video. We like doing these special, more long videos every once in a while. So thank you, Tony McGuire, for the request. Give us a good excuse to do one of these things that's not so trending right now. So thank you. What are some of the horror movies that scared you guys the most? Doesn't have to be your favorite, just the ones that actually scared you. Leave a good comment that? down below. Maybe gave you a nightmare. No. Nah. Made you lose a little sleep. No. Nah. Pee a little bit. I poo. <laughs> I poo. Apu. Apu. <laughs> Subscribe to The Real Rejects. Please click that notification bell to get notified every time one of our videos is up. You can follow us on social media. Links in the description box. And hey, yes, we have a Patreon, but also what you can do is download and follow us on the Stardust, Stardust. app. First time hearing about it, it's an app that allows you to do 30 second reactions for any film, TV show, or movie. So sometimes we might not do a review of a show, but we will give our instant reaction on it and plus we're covering some like older films that we just happen to stumble across or whatever so yeah follow us there and we'd really appreciate it